Hey guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, thank you so much universe for what has happened for me in the last 34 hours. Um, I now have nearly a thousand new subscribers. Thank you so much if this is the first video that you've watched of mine. Okay, today I'm going to talk about heavenly visitations that are called spirits. Spirits are those who pop in and see us. They give us signs that they're here, like we might smell their perfume or we'll smell their cigarettes or we'll feel, it's like a touch where they're hugging us or we just sense they're around us. Do, 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 do. So today I want to talk about spirits not ghosts. Ghosts are those who stay earthbound and one of my books is called Ghosts Explained, which I go into ghosts, but today I'm talking about spirits, okay? We live in a society where we put so much onus of um, importance on what we can physically see. And when we're talking about spiritualism and paranormal and supernatural things that go bump in the night. It's extremely rare to capture this sort of information as evidence, okay? It is our personal or our empirical evidence that means so much to us. So today I want to share a story where I captured that empirical evidence through what a spirit said and the woman who was here who confirmed it. I don't have her recording. I don't have any proof that she exists. But I'm sure by the end of this story, you're going to have tingles. So we must go back about five years ago. A lady rang me up and said, can you please come over to, can I come over to your house? And I said, sure. So we're having a coffee. And I said, well, while you're here, why don't I do an aura cleanse on you? An aura cleanse is basically where we sweep off all the negative energy around us, right? So I'm doing this aura cleanse. Instantly, right behind her, a man turned up. And I'm looking at him like, who's that? He appeared early 20s. So I'm looking at this woman and I said, oh my God, you've got someone standing behind you. And instant, this is what she does. Where, 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 where? She couldn't see this man. So I said to her, do you mind if I have a look inside your body? Because I am what's called an int medical intuitive. I can see inside people's bodies. So as I'm doing this body scan of her and I get to her midsection, I look inside her ovaries and I said to her, I can see that you've given birth twice. And she said, I've only, I said, no, you've got two children. She said, no, I've only got one. And I said, well, I'm seeing that you've actually had two pregnancies. And then she went into this detail where she did have another son and he died at three days old. Please know I do not mean to upset or hurt anyone, ever. And if this story today does trigger you, please go and talk to someone about it. Seek out professional help, okay? Contact me if you want, okay? I'm a grief counsellor, I'm qualified. As I am also a qualified reverend. I've got a lot of qualifications. So anyway, off me, back to the story. This man is standing behind her. And I looked at him. He stood and it was almost like me sitting in this chair now. He was that vivid, that physical, but I could see slightly through him. He was translucent. So I knew that he was in energy form. He wasn't a full bodied person where I had to say, hey, are you alive? Because I do have to ask people that question if I don't know if they're alive or dead. Because that's how vividly I see ghosts and spirits, right? 
So I look at this guy and I said, can you please tell me who you are? He says, yes, I'm her son, Ben. So I look back at this lady and I said, did you call your son Benjamin? And she said, yes, I did. How did you know that? And I said, darling, because he's standing right behind you. Instantly she's, where, 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 where? <laughs> but then it kicks in, the emotion. She starts bawling her eyes out. She actually, actually sits down on my floor in my dining room. She's bawling her eyes out because now she's remembering those three days where she had her son. So it was quite painful. Very traumatic and thank God I always carry tissues, right? I'm going to try and make it light here in Australia. Look who's on our tissue boxes. You all know that, right? It's a kangaroo. So I'm giving her some tissues and I said, do you want a cup of coffee, etc. And Ben is still standing there. And Ben says to me, he says he's 22 years old. And I looked at this lady and I said, how long ago did you meet lose your son because he's telling me he's 22 years old. She said, Linda, he died 22 years ago. Confirmation number one. Then I looked at Ben and I said, can you please give me something, a message that you wish to give to your mother? And he said, yes. And then I saw in my little TV screen that comes up as a psychic, I saw a window and below the window is a table and on this table there's this blue yellow object sorry I am dyslexic blue and yellow I always get confused it's a yellow object and he starts doing this with his hands I look at the lady and I said well is showing me a window oh, there's a table and on this table is this yellow, it's not like the generic teddy bear that everybody would keep. And I said, what's this about? She said, Linda, on that table, because it's true, it does exist. On that table, I've kept his nightlight. It was of yellow duck. And when it turns on, the wings go up and down. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, right? I've never seen a duck that does that at nightlight. But then he starts doing this. You know, and it's like the old Star Bright song, if you ever knew that Star Bright song. Everything's going to be all right. So he starts doing this with his hands. And I said, what does this mean? And he's showing me all these different colours. She said, Linda, when it's turned on, the wings go up and down. And... There's a rainbow effect that comes out of this yellow plastic duck and it goes like a rainbow all over the walls. So she's in awe, absolutely bawling her eyes out because she cannot believe the accuracy of the information that I gave her. Then Ben interrupts me and he says, tell her about when she was in Singapore and the iron fell on her foot and she broke a toe. So I looked at this lady and I said, were you ever in Singapore? Yes. Well, um, did you, do you remember an incident where you dropped the iron? She said, that's the day I broke my toe. And I said, right, I need to go outside with Ben now because Ben's pretty active. So I went outside with Ben. He told me, tell her I was there with her when she had the bottom left to, um, can, um, wisdom tooth pulled out. I said, darling, did you have your back left wisdom tooth pulled out? Yep. She yells out. Confirmed. Another one on there. She he says, tell her the day that she was on the train and she missed the stop. Were you on a train one day and you missed a stop? She said, oh yeah, I had to go back 20 k's that day. He was with her then. Then he says, I was the, I'm the eldest son. I was there the day that she had her son and she cut the cord. So I yelled out because she was still inside sitting on the floor at this point with the box of tissues. I said, were you, um, the day that you had your son, were you the one who actually cut his umbilical cord? She said, yes, I was. I said, well, Ben was with you for that one too. 
Then he yells at, he's telling me all these instances. Tell her about the time when. Tell her about the time when. I was there for her when this happened. I was with her when this happened. And we're, we're talking for 45 minutes where Ben did not shut up. Telling me, tell her I was there with her when she did this. Tell her when she got that. Remember, remember the time that she got the Christmas card from Auntie Betty. I said, do you have an Auntie Betty? She said, my sister's Betty, so it would be his Auntie Betty. I said, well, do you remember the Christmas card? And I was telling her about what was happening with that Christmas card. Yes. All confirmed. Tick, 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 tick. So let's go there. How did I know Ben was a spirit and not a ghost? Because one, he was not a baby anymore. Ghosts generally, 99% <laughs> of the time, stay as the age in which they passed over. Spirits, however, because they're in heaven where there's no time, no space, no nothing, they can come through as any age, any look that they want because they've now realized like I did when I died that we can manifest anything we want. I can't wait for the day when I've got my blonde long hair again that goes down to nearly my butt cheeks, if you know what I'm, past my waist, right? I can't wait for the day when I've got my really long nails again that I had when I was like 18, okay? And then I want the hair from when I was 26, and then I want the skin of when I was four, okay? So we can mix, mix and match all of this together, and that's what spirits can do as well. They can come through as the best version of whatever it is that they want to be. So this guy comes through now as a 22-year-old to show her that it's been 22 years in her time that she hasn't seen him, even though he sees her all the time. So let's just go there. I gave her some tools that day on how to connect with her son. All she's got to do is talk to him. But he also had to learn what he was actually capable of doing. I said to Ben, <laughs> now this is really weird because even, you know, it, it even I'm so humbled, you know. <laughs> and here I am teaching a spirit from heaven how to communicate with his mother who's missing him. Makes me cry because I get so happy. <laughs> about this anyway so I said to Ben sorry I've got to wipe my eyes because they always water but now I really am crying tears of joy here because this is such an amazing story and you know it, this story happened about four or five years ago and I still get upset about it because it is so heart-wrenchingly awesome this story because of the hope it gives to us right I said to Ben I said are you aware now, with your energy, you can't just touch your mum anymore. So you've got to zap her like electricity. <laughs> so I'm outside in my backyard talking to Ben and his mum's in the, on my dining room floor. She's still sitting there with a box of tissues just listening to what I'm saying. Yeah, she'd hear me say something. And then the pause. Because she's only hearing the one side of that conversation. She can't hear his replies, right? So she was hearing me. And then she'd hear me again. But she couldn't hear him talking back to me, right? Oh, God. So, anyway, I said, look, let's play a game with your mum. <laughs> so she couldn't hear because she was inside the house. I said, let's practice it right now. All you got to do is go near your mum and think about how much you love her. Electricity. Feel that energy. Build it within yourself how much you love your mum. And then just zap her with it. <laughs> it was about 20 seconds, and I hear this woman go, Ow! But after that happened, Ben 
disappeared because he'd spent all his energy. Because they can only pop through, right? It takes an extreme amount of energy to pop in. So he had to go back and like, it's like he had to go back and charge himself again. <laughs> okay. He had to charge himself. Just plug him back into the source here. <laughs> go back to heaven for a few hours and just boost it, you know, power up. <laughs> so you can come back and see your mum tonight. See you same time tomorrow, boy. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got a sense of humor with this because I deal with ghosts and spirits all the time. Okay. Um, but anyway. Let him get, let's get serious here. We can teach ghosts and spirits what they can and can't do. They're all energy. Let's look at the movie Ghost. Patrick Swayze stayed as a ghost, right? You know, the movie Ghost with Demi Moore. He stayed as a ghost and he went, it, was, it was only when he was on that train with the subway ghost. That's what he was called in the, in the credits. The subway ghost. That guy taught him how to move the cans because he can't kick the cans. He's got to now start using his energy. And he explains it in the movie as you feel it in here and you build it. Because what he's really saying is you build that energy of emotion. You know what it's like when you're excited about something? You're waiting for the postman because he's bringing you that $10,000 check today. Or you're waiting on a download to finish so you can start watching your best movie ever. You know that excitement that we build? Build and build and build and build and build. That is what I'm talking about. When spirits and ghosts start moving things, it's through that energetic connection of emotions. Okay? So we can teach ghosts what they can and can't do. Okay? So if you do have a loved one that you do want to try and start communicating with, Start talking to them because they can hear you really clearly. You just say, hey, mum, or auntie Betty. Okay. And you say to them, oh, please know I'm having trouble receiving you. So how about you just build on that emotion and you put it towards the light. And you think, okay, put all your energy towards the light. And then the light might dim or the bulb will blow and you think, good girl, you did it. Always give them praise, always give them thanks when they get it right, right? So then they know they're learning how to do it again with your approval where it's not scaring you, okay? Generally, when things move around and generally <laughs> when you're hearing and all these weird noises, it's someone trying to get our attention. So we've got to work out why they want our attention. Do they want to let us know that they're here to, because they love us? Are they trying to let us know that they're here because they want us to get out of their house? You see what I mean? I've had pot plants thrown at me by an old lady. It's one of my videos on my playlist about ghosts. I've had a car engine thrown at me one night when I said, please, can you let me know if you're here? Don't try that one, okay? Um, but they were ghosts, spirits in the other term. Like Ben, who was one of the most vivid spirits that I've ever met. He is with his mother constantly. He's watching over her, possibly as a guardian angel, possibly as a spirit guide. But guaranteed, he loved her so much that he was patient enough to wait for her to come to him. And he was also self-sacrificing his own empowerment of his energy to be concerned with hers. What an amazing story. I've like, I hope that you like this story. Go and talk to your ghosts and spirits. Ask them how they want to come through. Give them some tools to say, let me smell you. Let me feel you. Show them my exercise and how to get friction in our hands so then they can come through. And the best thing is, the more they learn it, the more they can obtain it. Like Ben, look how obvious and apparent and frequent his visits are to his mum. Hope this has given you some guidance today. I hope that this has given you some 
hope that there is something out there that is so much far better than the reality of what we have here now. Don't be in a rush to get there. Because if we don't learn our lessons, we come back to do it all again. <laughs> Love you all. Thank you so much for watching my channel. And I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.